Maybe bad. That sounds sexy. Greetings, this is Eugene the Philosopher, the greatest living philosopher after the unfortunate passing of Quentin Robert de Nameland, who has been the greatest living philosopher before me. So I've thought of making this video for quite a while, and now I've finally done it, alright? So in this video we're gonna be considering a tier list uh, of uh, like 100 the greatest philosophers or something like that. Uh, so what is a tier list? It's basically a ranking. So essentially what this video is, is philosopher ranking philosophers, all right, something like that, or some other silly way of describing it, okay? So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. So let's proceed. Okay, so let's start. Uh, for this tier list, for our ranking of the philosophers, first of all, like where did I get the, the data on so to speak, 100 greatest philosophers, who you can see here, it's from this list, which I'm going to link in the description. Why do I use this particular one and not some else, some other one, is because it has pictures. And I didn't want to, you know, like, uh, spend like a few hours looking for pictures for whatever random other list that didn't have them, so I used this one. So why are only these people included here? You should ask the author and not me. I'm just using it as a substrate for our endeavor, whatever it is. Okay, so let's go. Probably, right? Oh, yeah. Firstly, let, let's adjust the tiers themselves. So the highest tier, we'll, we'll probably call it Nietzsche tier, okay, for obvious reasons. Uh, uh, then we'll have a good, and we'll have like an average, then we'll have like meh, then we'll have irrelevant, there's people who are completely irrelevant for philosophy and for society, and then we'll have like anti-philosophy tier, alright? Uh, Maybe, you know, I'll actually... Oh, shit. I just deleted it. Never mind. Uh, we'll have uh, meh again, and probably bad. Since we have good, it's nice to have some symmetry, alright? Okay, so, let's go. Like, some of these people, actually a lot of them, I don't know how they look. Like, uh, I cannot, you know, make a... Uh, direct, uh, uh, like, I, I just know, like, don't know who, who the person is, right? So I'm going to use the list itself, uh, so because it has the names written already, <laughs> so it's going to be easier. So let's start with Immanuel Kant. Um, where is he? There he is. I'll probably put him in, um, uh, like, probably average. Like, he's like the very typical philosopher. Uh, obviously, he's very influential. Like, he created the whole German classical idealism or German classical philosophy in general. Uh, and arguably, most of the following philosophy comes from him in this way or another. But still, per se, especially today, as a philosopher, he's pretty average. Like, I'm, I'm actually thinking about putting him in meh, but I still think, like, he has enough um, uh, accolades, if that's the word, like, enough uh, achievements to actually put him at least in average, right? Then what will we have next? Plato, right? Uh, where is Plato? Plato. The man, where are you? Oh, there you are. Uh, probably average as well. Like, he's a very, like, generic Greek, ancient Greek philosopher. Actually, uh, by the standards of Greek philosophers, he was kind of lame. I mean, it's uh, full of much more interesting characters and arguably even much more influential. But then again, Plato's fairly influential, if not to say highly influential. So, uh, let's put him in average. Like, again, th these are, like, very ge generic classic philosophers or classical, whatever is the... 
adjective? I don't know. Aristotle is another one of these, actually. He's obviously a student of Plato. Uh, again, super highly influential. Then again, the, the question is, uh, uh, did he actually exist in the first place? But that's a more difficult question. Well, actually, specifically uh, address this topic with regards to many other philosophers. Uh, but with regards to Aristotle, at least he was influential. So whoever it was, uh, you know, who made these books, uh, which are uh, attributed to him, uh, made some interesting, some pretty influential work or job or whatever. Nietzsche, well, I mean, it's obvious we have a tier named after him. So we'll put him there. Like, I'm basically, like, not comparing him to anyone else because of personal reasons. Like, uh, to me, like, there is Nietzsche and there is everything else, pretty much. So, there you go. Uh, like, objectively, like, if we didn't have this tier, I'd definitely put him in good, right? But uh, to me, personally, it's beyond good. So, beyond good and evil, you might say. <laughs> okay. Martin Heidegger. Uh, Martin Heidegger is right here. I almost specifically created this anti-philosophy tier for people like Heidegger, and there is at least one person that I can think of like Heidegger. Uh, I think if these people didn't exist in the history of philosophy, it would have been better. Uh, but then again, I cannot say that they are irrelevant because, uh, or bad even, because like uh, they they were pretty damn influential, right? So like Heidegger is uh, like super influential for existentialists, obviously, and therefore, um, but it's not like he is he was a good guy in any sort of sense actually i think his philosophy might be described as obscurantism if that uh, if such a word even exists in english which basically means that he deliberately and i emphasize like deliberately <laughs> made things uh, less clearer than they should be all right so it's not helpful like complete it's very very not helpful what what he did okay uh, michel foucault uh, where is he? Uh, like again, this list, uh, the the pictures when I was loading them here into this tool, like they've been, they, they didn't sort themselves in any sort of order. Uh, so that's why, like, there's a bit of chaos, and that's why I'm using this uh, list because at least we have some structuring over here. Okay. So, Michel Foucault, uh, I actually saw him, like, literally a second ago. There he is. Uh, I would say he's good. He's, like, not necessarily Nietzsche tier. Uh, good, but he is definitely good. Uh, he's extremely influential today, obviously, uh, especially for all the lefty thinkers. Uh, but, uh, like, I mean, he's a pretty controversial figure, but uh, I would say, like, by my standards, he's a good philosopher. Okay, Hegel. Well, uh, how does the picture look? Okay. Hegel is the second person that I would call anti-philosopher, at least on this list. So it's also a complete obscurantism, like a deliberate... Uh, I don't know, overcomplification in the very, like, worst sense of the word. Uh, it's just like, um, and like his books even, <laughs> like, I can appreciate the irony. Like, he has the book called Science of Logic. And, like, uh, if you try to read it, like, on page two, you, you would already understand that there's no science in this book and definitely no logic. Like, it's just, like, one of the most horrible things you can do to your life is like read one of these guys uh, so whoever recommends you those like he's probably he's probably out of his mind or something Karl Marx okay where is um, as a philosopher he's pretty meh uh, I cannot really say he's bad because some of his ideas are pretty good 
uh, I mean it uh, viable right uh, as ideas like I, I don't necessarily agree with them actually I disagree with most of what he said but uh, they are viable at least all right and I can't really put him in average because he's like he's too actually uh, I don't know actually maybe I should put him in bad like I, I didn't like we didn't uh, agree upon a criteria all right so uh, I don't know like me sort of uh, implies some sort of again mostly irrelevant stuff right but bad is like act actively bad but he might be good at being bad you know which he kind of is so <laughs> i don't know let's put him in bad for now like maybe we'll revisit it later okay ludwig wittgenstein uh, let me look at the photo to recognize okay uh i would say rather good um like again, he's extremely influential, and he's a very interesting person. I mean, there there's a pretty a lot of shady stories about him, uh, but he's one of the most original thinkers. That is for sure. So just by virtue of being that, and it's actually a pretty good thinker, in my opinion, I'm all putting him in good. All right, Edmund Husserl. Um, let me find him first. Is that him? Yes. So he is the father of uh, phenomenology, and as such, like I can't put him in good because, like, most of what he said is rather trivial for anyone who read Nietzsche, and Nietzsche was living like what I don't know, like, or at least actively writing, like maybe twenty years before Husserl was. I'm not sure about the dates, actually. But anyway, anyone who have read Nietzsche, by reading Husserl, you would think, but that that's just trivial, man. Like, you haven't uh, said anything new, you know? <laughs> so I would say it's average. It's definitely not meh. Like, he's pr pretty, pretty good, actually, with respect to meh. But he's pretty average uh, overall. Thomas Aquinas... Uh, just looking at the portraits to be able to recognize them. Okay. Uh, I mean, he is like uh, considered to be like the father of uh, Thomism, right? The uh, official philosophy of uh, Catholic Church, pretty much. Uh, so maybe I'll put him in the average. I cannot call him good because the philosophy itself is kind of bad. I mean, it kind of sucks uh, by modern standards, at least. I can't call him bad because, well, he was he wasn't bad actually. Like uh, so, one of these two, I don't know. Maybe meh. Yeah, probably that looks correct actually to me. Like he's not he's not on on this level. I think he's meh. Okay, David Hume. Uh, in between these two, probably. Like. Uh, his works in terms of like gnosiology, like the theory of knowledge, uh, is pretty important, I would claim. But like the caliber of Wittgenstein and Foucault, not sure, not sure. Well, okay, let, let's give him a benefit of the doubt and put him in good for now. Yeah, why not? Looks decent for now. Gilles Deleuze, okay, where is he? The man in the hat. Uh, okay, this is getting embarrassing again. Uh, it's probably even more okay, even more embarrassing if you you would have noticed him before I did. All right, okay. Uh, he's definitely not man, not bad. Um, I mean, if we're putting Hume here, then Deleuze definitely uh, belongs here. Like Foucault actually said that uh, one day, maybe 20th century, would be called Deleuze's century, but I'm not sure about this. He's definitely one of the most influential thinkers in like postmodern philosophy. Um, also, notable fact is that he actually died by suicide. Uh, he jumped from his window. I mean, he was kind of very sick, so who knows? But uh yeah this looks i mean hume looks kind of out of place here to be honest maybe i'll put him an average after all yeah let's, let's do it okay now it looks much better 
to me anyway. Okay, uh, Jacques Derrida, uh, another, uh, the father of deconstruction, uh, Mr. Deconstructor, where is he? Uh, his texts are one of the, or at least are considered to be one of the most complex works to work with, to read. I mean, man, where are you? Oh, there he is. Okay, I'll probably cut the, like, uh, half a minute of me looking for him. Um, he's definitely not me. Uh, the... And probably not... Uh, actually, I don't know. Like, Deleuze is... Wittgenstein, like, I don't know. Let's put him in average. Like, he's not average in the sense of being generic, like these three, for example. But he's he's not that good to be put. Actually, we, we should have like separated good into two tiers. Um, and you know what? Uh, let's put him in good because why not? I mean, he was a smart guy. Okay, Sigmund Freud, uh, with all the memes about your mother and stuff, um, psychoanalysis, um, uh, definitely good. Like, actually, like, if you read him, like, his texts are very, very good. Like, just by themselves, all right? Like, you might disagree with him, but he's definitely, like, one of the um, very, very strong thinkers in his own right. So I'll put him here. Uh, St. Augustine, the guy with the table, should be easy to find. There you go. Uh... I would say irrelevant, like it, it could be on the level of me, but like I, I wish to open like a chapter because there are many people like this, well not, maybe not many, but a few people like this in this list who are irrelevant in the sense that we don't even, we're not even sure that he even existed, like at least I'm not sure, all right? And if that's the case, then I mean, he's pretty irrelevant. Like, his book is considered to be pretty influential, right? The, um, how do you call it, the translation in English, uh, I don't know, like, Confession or whatever. Uh, uh, whatever. I mean, uh, okay. No, let, let's put him in irrelevant, okay. Gottfried Leibniz. Yeah, so my point was that... Uh, there's a lot of, uh, okay, a few of people, people that I'm not sure that they've existed in the first place, all right? And I'm going to be mostly putting them in irrelevant. Uh, because, again, <laughs> like, whether they existed or not is kind of irrelevant, uh, just as their philosophy is. Like, it may, it may have been some random monk in 15th century writing this book, pretending it's like 1,000 years old. Etc. Uh, Etc. Et but the book itself, like it's amusing on some level, but then again, what it represents ultimately is like some mental gymnastics of a Christian fanatic. All right, and like, really, is is it so important for for like the history of thought? Maybe as as a self, like a, as a diary for some some people like this to analyze. Then yeah, maybe. But otherwise, it's it's irrelevant. I would say. Leibniz, uh, where is he? Uh, do, 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 do. Um, okay, there he is. Uh, as a philosopher, I would say he's pretty average. Like literally, like uh, he his views were very typical for that time, which is like the late seventeenth, early eighteenth century. Um, there's nothing super spectacular, no like huge revelations there. Um, maybe it's actually like uh, it deserves meh level. Uh, but then again, then I'll have to relegate some of these people to meh as well, probably. So it's pretty average, I would say. Um, Benedict Spinoza, as a thinker, is actually pretty good. Like, uh, like if you read him, he actually thinks very clearly. Uh, and it's 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 like a good uh, I don't know it's just, just pleasant to read him let's say and uh, probably like somewhere between average and good uh, let's put him in good because why not I mean he he's just like like a pretty you know mm, pleasant guy overall to read um, 
let's put him in good. Like, definitely, if you read a lot of Spinoza, you won't be a worse person because of that. Actually, quite the contrary, I would say. John Locke. Uh, where is John Locke? Mm -hmm. There he is. So he's considered to be like a father of liberalism, all right? However, there are serious issues with, like, uh, again, his status as any sort of recognizable person. Like, it might be so that the, the, the legend of Locke, so to speak, was invented much later, when uh, Britain became a much stronger country, uh, and then people, like, invented, or, you know, like, in thick air quotes, uh, suddenly found like a critique of Leibniz on one of Locke's works, uh, because again, like Britain was nothing in the, uh, in the like the middle of the 17th century. It was like a backwater province, essentially, and that that was the time when Locke uh, was active. Uh, so I don't know, uh, like second half of the 17th century, basically something like that. So I don't know. I can't uh, put him in like. I, I like liberalism, but I have doubts that Locke actually was that important for liberalism per se. So let's put him in average, maybe? Yeah? Something like that? Like, if I put him in good, this list would suddenly turn into some very generic list. I don't want this to happen, so I'll put him in average. Um, it, it, it may be, like, he, he's definitely not bad, but uh, I don't know. Let's put him in average. Uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, where is he? Like, I saw him, but the, the list keeps uh, changing, keeps shifting, there he is. Um, uh, again, somewhere between here. I can't call him good, so let, let him be average, actually. Like, mm, not me. No, let, me, let him be average. Actually, yeah, you can see that my tiers are actually, they, they kind of suck. I should have made some different classification. Uh, Thomas Hobbes, another uh, English, whatever, British thinker. So, I've frequently mentioned his metaphor of clocks. He's uh, uh, the clockwork metaphor of the world uh, by Thomas Hobbes. Uh, he's also more famous for, like, the author of the Leviathan metaphor, which is basically like a pamphlet proclaiming the uh, post-Treaty um, uh, of Versa uh, Westphalia world, basically national state-oriented world. Uh, so, as a thinker, though, I don't know. I would say meh. Like, maybe Locke actually deserves to be here as well. I mean, actually, yeah, yeah, let's do it like this. I like it, I like it. Um, John Dewey, uh, it's like a generic American philosopher, uh, and the words American philosopher are what is called contradictio in adiecto, the basically ox oxymoron, right? There's no such thing as an American philosopher, so, I don't know. He's not actively bad as Marx. Meh is the best he can, uh, he can be probably bad. I don't know, I don't know. Does he deserve, actually, to be on the same level as Marx? I don't think so. Uh, uh, Soren Kierkegaard, uh, frequently considered to be as a like a pre-existing existentialist, no pun intended, like a grandfather of existentialism. Actually, I've read like the Seducer's Diary and some other works of his, and they are pretty good, uh, as a literary pieces, uh, at least. I'm not sure they are as good as like the works of these guys in philosophical sense. In fact, I'm pretty sure they're not, so let's put him in average. He's not that bad. Maybe we shall actually, you know, we shall order them, like, from left to right as well. Uh, I'll do that later. Uh, let's let's leave it as that for now. Bertrand Russell. Uh, where is he? There he is. So, 
Um, as a philosopher, not a logician or mathematician, which he was. I mean, he, he is famous for writing history of philosophy, like history of Western thought, um, alongside Whitehead, who is also on the list, by the way. Um, I would say, man, like, I can't think of any actually, like, philosophical idea. Like, there's a Russell's teapot, but then again, it's, it's I mean, it's so lame. Like, you think about any French or German thinker who would invent something like that, and it wouldn't even be named because it's so lame and so trivial. But on the level, on the level of these guys, maybe it's cool. Actually, like, these are okay. I'll, I'll like put them to the right later, but they don't deserve to be here with with Dewey and Russell, like Aquinas maybe. But I don't know. I don't know. Let, let's leave it as that for now. Uh, Jean Jacques Rousseau, one of the most uh, prominent figures in uh, French Enlightenment. Uh, I can't say he's super good though. Uh, he's definitely not good. Maybe average, but I would say meh. It's just my opinion. Maybe average at best. Average at best. Actually, no, Kant is much better. Much more influential. Let's put him in meh for now. Maurice Merleau-Ponty. Uh, there he is. Right. Uh, I don't think anyone would argue if I put him in irrelevant. Let's just let's just end with that. René Descartes. Uh, René Descartes. Can't put him in good. Actually, I can, if I think about it. Like, if you think about it, actually, like Descartes is the start of modern philosophy as it is. So maybe I should put him in good. But. If you compare him to all these other guys who are in good, like he's not at the same level, I would say. He's of the same caliber, but I mean, he, he's too old, you know, <laughs> to compete with these new guys. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. No, let's leave him in average for now. We'll see if I change my mind. Emmanuel uh, Levina. Or Levinus, or Levinus, whatever you call it, uh, however you pronounce it, uh, irrelevant. I don't think you would object. William James, uh, where is he? Guy with a beard, there he is, irrelevant. I'm sorry if that disappoints some of you. Hannah Arendt, where is she? Irrelevant. Jürgen Habermas. He's like somewhere between irrelevant and meh. And maybe we'll, we'll actually give him benefit of the doubt. Actually, like looking at the, yeah, like uh, these two don't deserve to be here, like with these other guys. Hmm. Rousseau, like definitely. But then again, if we put Rousseau in average, should put Descartes higher. I don't know. I don't know. Let's leave it for now. John Stuart Mill uh, is pretty influential, actually. But uh, it's it's the, the like the, the level of understanding uh, is. I mean, the the level of his discourse, if you wish, if we speak in Foucault terms. Uh, it's 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 not super good. Actually, like these two look really good together. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put bad above me. All right, th that looks much better because now me is kind of worse. Th like bad is at least influential, but they're like they're like actively maleficent. You know, <laughs> they're actively bad, <laughs> whereas these guys are not uh, not good enough to even be bad. You know, sort of like this. I, I think it looks good. Yeah, I like it. Let's leave it as that. And Jacques Lacan, uh, where is he? Uh, he's he's pretty average. Like. Uh, 
again, he's one of the like uh, modern, sort more modern than Freud um, uh, school of psychoanalysis. And as such, he is very influential. He's one of the most influential like psychoanalysts out there. But mm -hmm, as a philosopher in general, he kind of sucks. So I don't know. Actually, yeah, let's put him... Wait, what did just happen? Let's put him in bad. I like it. Like, Lacan is exactly the person you want in, in this uh, role. Yeah, I like it. It looks cool. Yeah. Walter Benjamin... Uh, where is he? I'm sorry, irrelevant. Uh, Charles Pierce. Uh, let me find him first. I mean, you you already can guess. Right? Uh, Hans Gadamer. Where is he? There he is. Uh, meh. He doesn't deserve to be here, but he doesn't deserve to be above this. So, man, he's exactly the place where he belongs. John Rawls. Or Rawls, or whatever. Uh, let me look at his portrait again. Uh, there he is. I'm sorry, my, my friend. It was good to know you. Slavo Zizek. I mean, just for mimetic value all right by mimetic value alone we can say that he's bad right like th this company looks perfect i think like these people are <laughs> they would have loved each other i think <laughs> all right uh, paul ricoeur okay i've actually mentioned him in one of my videos i think it was about popular science where i said that i'm i'm Responsible but not guilty. There's this anecdote about uh, Paul Ricoeur. Uh, kind of meh. Uh, like, this is a much higher caliber, so I can't put him there. He's not bad, so I can't put him here either. And he's not good, so I can be there. Whitehead. Who actually has a pretty white head, or at least gray. Uh, I'm sorry, but I would say irrelevant. Roland Barthes, the author of the death of the author idea, ironically. Um, uh, there he is. Um, meh. Like, on the level of, like, as, as a, you know, journalist, as a writer, maybe he's pretty cool like a writer of some fashionable, you know, essays, something like that. Like, he's pretty cool. As a philosopher, though, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe as a philosopher of postmodernism, he's, me uh, he's average. Like, as, a rep as an average representative of this, you know, 1960s postmodern philosophy, he is average, indeed. As a, like, a very genetic, uh, generic member of such... Um, yeah, let's 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 leave him there. Karl Popper, uh, obviously one of the most influential people in philosophy of science. Though I cannot say that he is like super good. Uh, well, we'll put him in average because why not? Uh, Gottlieb Fichte, one of the representatives of classical German philosophy. Uh, I mean, they're they're all like borderline irrelevant. I w like to me personally, he's definitely irrelevant. But maybe there are his fans uh, looking at this looking at this video. So I don't know. Meh, probably yeah, at best. Gottlob Frege, one of the ideologues of uh, analytical philosophy. Uh, as such, as such, maybe he's average. Like, yeah, yeah, I like it. Like, these people are pretty solid, all of them. Like, maybe Bob Baft is actually a little bit out of place here. Hmm. But I can't put him in there, really. Oh, actually, why can't I? Let's put him in there. Yeah, that looks fine. 
Henri Bergson, uh, the philosophy of life, right? Uh, pretty, 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 pretty good guy, actually. Maybe, maybe deserving. Yeah, I'll just put him in good. Like, definitely, definitely much more interesting than what we have here and here and here. Actually, like in terms of interesting, these guys are interesting. They're just bad. <laughs> Ralph Waldo Emerson. This is actually one of the, if not the only person who, who I can legitimately call American philosopher, but he was a writer. But still, like, he's good. He's good. No questions asked. Theodore Adorno. Uh, if not for his influence, I would say he's irrelevant. Actually, let's put him in bad. Yeah, yeah, th they look perfect together, I'm telling you guys. Uh, yeah. <coughs> Niccolo Machiavelli. Uh, between average and good. <laughs> Looking at this, uh, I need to remove Derrida. Machiavelli... Hmm. Let him be average. Like, I, I like these people. I don't necessarily like Machiavelli. But he's very influential and overall much better than the most, actually. Uh, Blaise Pascal, an author of very dark philosophy, like again, basically confessions of a Christian fanatic. So as such, as a philosopher, I mean, obviously he was also a scientist and he created the, like the calculator and stuff. But I don't know. I don't know, man. As philosopher, he's pretty meh. Arthur Schopenhauer. I mean, just by virtue of having Nietzsche tier. Actually, <laughs> maybe you put him in Nietzsche tier as well. Uh, but then it would kind of destroy the irony, right? So we should put him in good, just good. Lucius Aneus Seneca. Where are you, my friend? In case you don't know, like the irony be be behind uh, Seneca's philosophy is that he was like one of the Stoics, right? But he actively violated everything that he wrote, like uh, almost deliberately violated. So he wrote about virtue, but he, he himself was a very, uh, very funny character. So I don't know, like I, I kind of like this this thing. I can't even put him in average, like. Maybe bad. That sounds sexy. Yeah, actually, let's put him in bad. It's kind of funny, at least. Uh, Erasmus of Rotterdam. Uh, one of the key figures of uh, Renaissance. But then again, Netherlands were like a desolate swampland back then, so he's kind of... A legendary character rather than an actual person. I don't know. Like in terms of his influence, it's it's mad at best. I can't say he's completely irrelevant like these guys, but he's definitely out there. Friedrich Schelling, again one of the classical uh, German idealists. Where is he? I'm sorry, but. There's only one place these people can go to. Simone de Beauvoir, the wife of Sartre. I'm sorry. Uh, borderline bad, actually. Because of her advancement of uh, retarded ideologies like feminism. I don't know. I, I think she deserves to be bad, yeah. She's a bad girl. George Berkeley, uh, in terms of like philosophy of knowledge, like Nasiology and stuff, he's pretty good. I would put him in average. Like, yeah, he des definitely deserves to be there. Albert Camus, uh, they're often like paired with Sartre because, well, 
pretty much the same person in different suits and one has like a slightly better vision I assume but then again Camus himself is kind of bad not in this, in this sense of the word bad but he he's actually he actually sucks as a writer and in general as a thinker I, I think I'll put him in me like Sartre at least he has some balls like Camus has no balls uh, unfortunately so I'll put him in me uh, Richard Rorty there's only one place these type of people can go to Francis Bacon again the father of empirical method so we'll put him in average can't say he's bad can't say he's meh just an average philosopher Maimonides uh, who is basically the Mo Moses right the actual Moses not the legendary one irrelevant I'm sorry Judith Butler you know my opinion Alain Badiou um, where is he show yourself Alain Badiou Badiou did I delete him accidentally I don't know it could have been the case I mean I can't find him oh there he is it's just like the picture is magnified I'm sorry Julia Kristeva, the modern psychoanalyst, I'm sorry. Queen, King, I don't know how it should uh, be read. Um, you know my opinion. Agamben, Agamban. Like, basically what he wrote is just like a commentary to Foucault. So, it's somewhere between meh and irrelevant. Looking at the uh, irrelevant, I'm sorry. Uh, Lyotard, again, somewhere out there between meh and irrelevant. Um, irrelevant. Anselm. So, this is a, an another case like this one. Well, this person probably didn't even exist, and if he did, nobody cares. Ernst Cassirer, or Cassirer, or whatever, you know my opinion. Jean-Luc Nancy, you know my opinion. Donald Davidson, of course, a highly influential philosopher. Uh, John Dun Scotus, another mythical character who never existed. Franz Brentano, uh, again, borderline irrelevant or meh. I don't know. I don't know, guys. Uh, let's continue our win streak, so to speak. Lucretius. Actually, <clears throat> he's one of the one of the people, thanks to whom uh, we have at least some understanding of Epicurean philosophy. Mm, and he was a good poet. Let's put him in average. Like, uh, uh, he's not a philosopher, actually. He's a poet. So, I don't know. Mm. I can't put him in meh. Actually, why can't I? I can't. He's not a philosopher. That's the only reason. Otherwise, he'd be an average. Edmund Burke. Uh, meh. Jeremy Bentham. Uh, it's one of these idiot utilitarianists. Like, yeah, I mean, it's completely irrelevant for any thinking person. Voltaire. Again, like, uh, as a philosopher, he wasn't actually a philosopher. Uh, I'm, I'm almost putting him in, in irrelevant, but just by, by virtue of, like, the scale of the person himself, like, as a politician, as a playwright, as a, uh, just as a, you know, like a public thinker, public intellectual, uh, he deserves to be at least in, I mean, uh, Rousseau is here, so why, why wouldn't Voltaire be here? Arguably, Voltaire is much better than Rousseau, though. So maybe I should put him in average. But he's not a philosopher. That's the problem, uh, per se. Right? Epicurus. 
actually I'm actually putting him in good uh, he's definitely in terms of ancient Greeks he's definitely above these two uh, I mean I could have commented more but uh, this video is gonna be uh, like an eternity uh, long then we'll just uh, keep it like that Thomas Kuhn one of the again like more famous modern philosophers of science so uh, except for that though he's kind of non-existent right so as a philosopher of science yes he's influential otherwise uh, so I'm almost actually Popper needs to be moved here as well I think into me yeah I'm sorry my man but Probably, yeah, that looks probably right. Like, yeah. Ironically, on average, we have not that many people, right? But that, that just uh, implies that the creator of this list wasn't actually... Or, I mean, maybe I have the high standards for average. <laughs> That's probably more uh, likely. Jacques Rancière. I'm sorry. Avicenna, again, a legendary uh, uh, doctor who most likely never existed. So, I mean, he was a doctor. Of course, he has like some quasi philosophy underlying his medicine. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. If he never existed, things would be the same. I would say Max Scheller, um, same thing, Plotinus, uh, just another Plato with the same name, even almost Luce Irigaray, Irigaray, whatever, Irigaray, you get my idea, Rudolf Carnap, actually. He's not irrelevant, he's meh. Uh, one of these uh, more analytical style philosophers. Uh, Claude Levi Strauss. Actually, this one is at least average uh, due to his works on, you know, like structural anthropology, what it's called. And it actually prepared the decolonization, or at least uh, was contemporary to the decolonization. So, he, at least politically, he's very influential. We'll put him in average. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic philosopher, notable for being Roman emperor in his free time. Um, I mean, he's very generic, just like Plato and Aristotle, like he's out there. Yeah, like these people, they look really good together, I should say. So, yeah, let's put him here. Averroes, or Averroes, you know my opinion. He probably never existed, even if he did, nobody cares. Same with Boetius. Um, Paul Feuerabend, uh, uh, epistemological anarchist. Borderline good. But uh, the level of the others in good is a bit too high. But I can't call him average either. He's like very limited by being only the philosopher of science. So I'll put him just in average. Like he's definitely above these guys, Kuhn and uh, Popper. But he's definitely below these guys just because by virtue of like their philosophy being much wider overall like again with the caveat that uh, Emerson is not a philosopher but he's a good guy Wilhelm Dilte uh, borderline irrelevant but actually kinda meh Herder you know my opinion Heraclitus actually good the problem is we like barely know him like there's like basically nothing from him that we know about <laughs> but what we do know is good 
and arguably he's one of the people who introduced uh, atomic theory into Greece th from India through Persia he was a Zoroastrian and you know you, you see the connections right Zarathustra and stuff and Nietzsche himself actually adored Heraclitus uh, I don't know borderline good I would say no definitely good let, let him be good Althusser you know my opinion good man all the good men go here uh, George Mead you know my opinion Proclus same story as with Plotinus Horkheimer you know my opinion Parmenides actually he's definitely not irrelevant I would say he's actively bad because uh, you see, actually, I'm almost putting him here, because both of these guys loved him. He's a sort of like pre-existing Hegel, if you wish, with the same stupid-ass concepts. But let's just put him in bad. Like, I like these two together here. Like, we don't have to add Parmenides here. Yeah, it looks good. Bonaventura. I have no idea who this is, to be honest. I mean, it sounds like a name, not like a last name. Michelle Henry, you know my opinion. And Austin, Texas. Okay, so that would be my tier list. I think... Yeah, let's try to order them left to right. No, that would be very hard. It would take me another, like, half an hour, probably. Yeah, that would be my tier list. This looks good. Like, these guys are anti-philosophy. Like, you, you would be doing only harm to yourself by reading them. These guys are completely irrelevant. You might just uh, completely forget about them. These guys are borderline irrelevant I would say like they, they aren't super good but they aren't that bad either these guys are actively bad uh, actually well we've discussed this right when I put Seneca here um, these are like more or less generic philosophers like and when I say generic and when I say average it's actually yeah like my standards are a bit high so uh, they're uh, by regular standards they're better than average let's say and these guys are like I would recommend okay and this is Nietzsche okay so I'll share all the links in the description maybe you would like to make your own tier list or if you wish to like if uh, you want me to classify some other philosopher that is not present here and maybe put his name in the comments also put all of your angry comments that like uh, why are these people irrelevant? Like, uh, you know, uh, I love all these people so much. Uh, they've impacted my life in such a way that is inconceivable to put them into irrelevant. Whatever. You get the idea. Okay. I think that will be all. Thank you for watching. The eons are closing.